Good morning and welcome to our morning devos with Pastor Mark. Um, we are going to try this uh, through my phone this morning because we are having problems with the computer again. Uh, but uh, hopefully uh, this will go through today as we continue our little uh, journey with C.S. Lewis um, through this subject of the inner ring. And um, <clears throat> today uh, the <clears throat> title is The Sly Impulse. And uh, again, this is coming from his book, The Weight of Glory. And so I hope you guys enjoy this. As uh, we will also be getting into, if you want to look up your scripture, Galatians chapter 5, starting at verse 19. Often the desire to be part of the inner ring conceals itself so well that we hardly recognize the pleasures of fruition. Men tell not only their wives, but themselves, that it is a hardship to stay late at the office or the school on some bit of important extra work, which they have been let, which they have been let in for, because they and so and so and the two others are the only people left in the place who really know how things are run. But it is not quite true. It is a terrible bore, of course, when old Fatty Smithson draws you aside and whispers, Look here, we've got to get you in on this examination somehow. Or Charles and I are, saw at once that you've got to be on this committee. A terrible bore. Ah, but how much more terrible if you were left out. It is tiring and unhealthy to lose your Saturday afternoons, but to have them free because you don't matter, that is much worse. Freud would say, no doubt, that the whole thing was a subterfuge of sexual impulse. I wonder whether the shoe is not sometimes on the other foot. I wonder whether in ages of promiscuity, many a virginity has not been lost less in obedience to Venus than in obedience to the lure of the Caucasus. For, of course, when promiscuity is fashion, the chaste are outsiders. They are ignorant of something that, are, that other people know. They are uninitiated, and as far as light, and as for the lighter matters, the number who first smoked or first got drunk for a similar reason is probably very large. In other words, what Lewis is saying right now is that, and this you'll see a lot, especially uh, I remember growing up as a teenager, that that would be the subject or subjects of fitting in with the with the inner ring or the inner circle or as we in junior high would say the cool kids um you don't want to be left out of that and so oftentimes the great lies would be made up and and uh hope um but uh the thing that i think lewis is trying to point out is that again here people are trying to do whatever they can to fit in with what they perceive as the popular group or the cool crowd or the inner ring or the people who um, really make the difference. And that's not necessarily true. And so um, the thing that we have to battle is the battle of our conscience. We, God has given us a conscience to, to live a moral life. And uh, our moral life is based on Scripture. And so that really started when he started talking about the battle of promiscuity um, is we have a battle to fight to stay pure um, at, until marriage uh, as believers, as followers of Christ. He wants us to be pure. And so, um, and he wants us to stay pure after marriage because um, one of the things that actually was told as we were doing marital, premarital counseling uh, uh for Rachel and I, uh, our pastor told us, he said, Satan will do everything he can to get you in bed before you get married, and he'll do everything he can to get you out of bed after you're married. And 
that is the constant battle of the pure uh, fruit of the Spirit versus the powers and sinfulness of the flesh. So let's look at Galatians chapter 5, starting at verse 19. Today I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. And it says, When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Um, another translation of this, which I want to bring up, let's look at the Holman Bible here real quick. Um, because these are things that we're faced with every day um, in our society, in our uh, in our world today. And it's not all, honestly, not all that different from when this was written. Um, but uh, to look at these again, now the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, immoral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. I am warning you about these things. See, these are all things that in our world today are they're common, they're normal, they're they're Outside of the Christian circle, these are all normal things that are no big deal to people anymore. And that's because we, I believe, are have lost the value of Christian morality and living according to Scripture. And that is not an inner circle that you want to fight to be in. I want to be the outsider of that kind of stuff. I want, I don't, and, and these are all things that we all struggle with, one, at least one of them. If not, if we've not wrestled with um, many of them at some point. Um, and so we have to be careful, especially with stuff like the sexual immorality, the um, hatred, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions. I mean, these are things, these are real human traits that the world encourages us to, to just feed into and God's telling us no, I want you to be filled with love joy, peace, patience kindness goodness, faithfulness gentleness oh, gentleness, that's a tough one for me because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of I, I'm, I'm kind of rough on the edges and and um, too often speak my mind and before I even think about how it's going to affect the people around me we those are things that we are challenged with that we need to uh, learn to control and we can't do it without the power of the Holy Spirit we cannot control these things without God's love flowing through us so as you think about these things today and we think about this this battle of um, wanting to be in the inner ring, um, as Lewis puts it. Uh, think about how God is speaking into your life this week about that. How is God speaking into your life about learning to stand out of the crowd and not be a part of the crowd, not to be like the world. We're in the world, but what does he tell us? Don't be of the world. And that is our great challenge for today is to uh, be able to step outside of that, be filled by God's Holy Spirit, and live for Him today. 
Hope you guys have a great day. I hope this came through okay. Let me know in the comments if this is if this has come through because it's kind of funny that I can't do this on my computer. But if it's coming through on the phone, well, praise God. Hey, his word is being heard and taught. And if you need that scripture reference again, it's Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 23. Um, or read the whole chapter because it really is uh, all about living by the Spirit's power and not our own. You guys have a great day. Let me pray for you, Lord God. I thank you for everybody who's listening today and watching. Uh, we pray that your word will continue to penetrate into our hearts, that you'll encourage us and help us to walk more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed day, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow.